It is one of the most debated questions of our time, chicken versus the egg, creation versus evolution, Kim Kardashian's butt real or fake? Can a woman get pregnant from pre-cum? And today, we're gonna cover that question off. And I'm gonna start off by disclaiming this. There is no 100% safe form of birth control other than not having sex. Here is why. Sperms are those little tadpole germ cells, and when a man ejaculates, he releases between 40 million and 1.2 billion of these germ cells. And each germ cell has the capability to swim up the vaginal canal, past the cervix, through the uterus, into the fallopian tubes and to find the tiny little ovum and impregnate it. So when I think about sperm, I think about sand. Like you know when you go to the beach and you like dust off, you use the water rinser, like you use a towel, you burn half the stuff and no matter what you do, there's always gonna be some sand somewhere at the end of the day. You're gonna just find sand um, and that's what sperm are like. So they, they can get in places, they can stick around, they can live for up to five days. So there's no real 100% safe form of birth control because they're everywhere. So no one is safe, but you can be safe. And we're going to use biology to explain why. Let's draw a super terrible diagram of the male reproductive system, starting with the bladder, which is also known as the pee pocket. Now attached to our pee pocket is the urinary tract, which is how pee exits the body and goes through the penis. So now we're gonna draw the penis over top, attaching it to the L of the urinary tract. Now behind the penis is the scrotum, the cozy home of the testicles, a place where testosterone and sperm and life is created. The epididymis is the coiled tubes that transfer the sperm from the balls, the two testicles, onto a single lane highway called the vas deferens. Now the vas deferens highway flows over top of the bladder where it meets a little fork in the road where the seminal vessel, also known as the cowper's gland is. This is important, we'll get to that later. Now, when the fork becomes one highway again, it is now known as the ejaculatory duct. It's cushioned by the fairly large prostate gland. Okay, let's look at our drawing once more, but how does this answer your question? We're gonna start with urine because I'm gonna assume most men do more peeing than ejaculating. When the bladder is full, it empties through the penile urethra and out of the end of the penis. Urine, as one may guess, is very acidic. This is important to note because sperm don't like acid. So after a male urinates, the urethra slash ejaculation duct is poisonous to sperm. So when a man becomes aroused, the body says, oh no, 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 but what about our precious sperm? How will they survive? And then the seminal vessel and prostate come to the rescue and release an alkaline fluid mixed with mucus and water and other gelatin-like substances that make the tube safe for sperm to travel through. This, ladies and gentlemen, is pre-cum. And no, there is no sperm in it. Some people release enough pre-cum to present itself at the tip, some don't. It doesn't matter how much, it isn't sperm ejaculation. But going back to what I said about sperm being kinda like sand, there is a possibility there is some sperm from a previous ejaculation hanging around in the tube that the pre-cum picks up as it tries to clean out the area. This is especially true if the male has not urinated between orgasm. So I hope everyone's like kinda clear at this point. If not, we're gonna go on to some easy commandments if you are using the pull-out method. Now number one, urinate before sex. Again, you don't know if there are some sperm chilling in the duct, hanging out there, and you wanna clear that possibility out. So once you urinate, you clean out the duct, you make it acidic, and you make it a more than likely fresh start where there are no existing lingering sperm. Number two, you are going to urinate after sex because if you are the kind of person who goes round for round, you wanna make sure you clean out the duct once again to make it acidic. So if you go back and you guys lie down and things start getting a little hot and heavy again, you don't have to worry like, there could be some sperm in there, even though there really could be still. Uh, you wanna lessen the chances of doing that by, again, making that duct acidic. Here's something I'm gonna say, which I'm hoping I don't have to, but 
If you are using the pullout method, there is zero protection in that. Sexually transmitted infections and diseases travel through very dense bodily fluids, which include pre-cum, which include vaginal fluids. So you are still likely to transmit a number of different infections by using no condom. So if there is no barrier, there is no protection. So when you're using pullout, it better be with someone that you trust. Next commandment, if you are using the pullout method as your form of birth control, it should always be used in relation to another form of birth control as well. Be that the rhythm method for women. And if you guys don't know what that is, leave a comment below and I will do a video just like this video in answer to that question. You can also use spermicide or cervical caps. And last but not least, because of the fact that this is a not so safe form of birth control, you have to talk to any partner that you use the pullout method with about family planning and pregnancy so you know what you're gonna do in the event that one of your sperms is just really, really gung-ho. Please subscribe, because I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by like, next month or something so your support would be greatly appreciated and also if you guys want to see another video kind of like this on another question that you have you've been dying to kind of understand leave a comment below and i will try to get to that one and in the meantime check out this video or any of my other cool videos and stick around because i don't know i just like your company